got a new truck. I've got a new truck. Um, damn, it's cold out here. I can see my breath. Oh, it smells a bit funny. Uh, yes, I have a new cross truck, which is always the best thing about a day. Big shout out to Simon at greensmodels.co.uk, one of the main suppliers, or one of the only suppliers I know of, uh, of cross trucks. Awesome bloke. Uh, thank you, Simon. Go and check out his website, greenmodels.co.uk. Um, really good supplier, really nice guy, always helpful, superb service. Um, I did buy this for my own money, by the way. Simon hasn't given me lots of money and free trucks and stuff like that. <clears throat> Go on, Si, you know you want to. Anyway, this is really exciting, and I am going to talk you through. I'm not going to do an unboxing, because there is no box. Just the lid. I will go through some bits in a little while, and that will be the uh, so kind of comparison to my MC6 for anyone wanting to know the size difference. There's a few uh, HC4s out there on YouTube, but not that many. Uh, for me, Android or Android always said it looks like a bit of a funny scale with the shorter flatbed. I kind of see what he means, but there's something about that cab. And I, I wanted a smaller truck, so I sold my Cross RC Mammoth, uh, and I'm not saying that for those people out there that might say that this is a good replacement for the Mammoth. It's not about that. Uh, the reason why I sold the Mammoth, there are, speci well, there are specific reasons. I'll put a link in the description to the video uh, about why I did that and you can go and have a look. So this really is just, I wanted a second 12 scale. I've got quite a few 110 scales. And I really wanted, when I first saw cross trucks, to have a one cross truck um, towing another cross truck on a trailer. Try to do that with the trailer I've got, um, my kind of 110 scale trailer with the Mammoth and the MC6 and the MC6 was just too big. This is going to be perfect towed on a trailer behind the MC6. It's not just going to be a trailer truck either, um, it's going to be run and it's just something that's a little bit smaller, a little bit more convenient and it just looks awesome. So I am really, really, really excited. It's another build. I'm still doing my Jeep build. Um, for those of you who haven't seen that, go and check that out. I'm doing um, Jeep Rubicon, Rubicon build for my SCX10. Colour, mm, not sure of at the moment, but that's kind of running jointly. So yes, there will be a build project on this. As I say, not an unboxing today or at any point, but I will go through some steps um, like we do on this channel. So that should be really exciting. Let's get away from my ugly mug and let's go onto the bench, zoom in, have a look at some bits that people might be want to be interested in. And again, I'll do a comparison with this and the MC6 in terms of size. If you know if you've got something similar to the MC6 size, then you can see how it compares. One interesting thing, it says one tenth on here. This isn't a one tenth as far as I'm concerned. In fact, the cab looks exactly the same size. Uh, what well, is the same size to me as the um, HC6, which is 112. Green's models have it as 112, but Cross US have it as 110. So I'm not sure. I, to my mind, it's a 112, not 110. Anyway, enough of the rambling. Let's get onto the bench and have a bit of a closer look. Okay, so let's have a quick look at some of the things which uh, are quite important to me. First of all, I've never had one of these really cool nice boxes with metal axles in. My MC6 has got plastic axles, so yeah, you don't get the fancy orange box. Of course, it being a HC4, you only get two axles. Um, and yeah, these boxes are pretty awesome. I mean, it was a constant ribbing from Andrew that I didn't get the metal axles on the MC6, and I really probably should have done And afterwards. It's just too expensive, really. I might one day, I might treat her. But these are really nice. Um, they're going to need quite a bit of shimming because they are, come on camera focus, they are, there's a lot of play in there, quite significant. So I'm going to open those up and have a play with them. This, that's the front and this is the rear. Let's have a look, see what the rear's like. Yeah, it's the same and at the ends of the axles as well. Yeah, there's a lot of play in there. They spin lovely and freely as you would expect. But yeah, I'm going to open those up and shim them before I do any kind of assembly, if you like, to the chassis. The wheels, tyres, 
These tyres are actually the same tyres as you get on the, P on the PG4. My PG4L has got exactly these same tyres, they're 108s. And they are really good tyres actually. Uh, there's a run, run video coming up soon. Andrew and I at the weekend went out with the Hummer and the PG4 and it was a proper mud bath. And these tyres did a really good job. So I'm going to keep these on there. I'm really looking forward to that and I'm pleased that they come with them. They're different tyres than you get on the HC6, interestingly enough. Which is, I understand from Steve and Andrew, that you get different tyres on the Cross RC Gaz, the flatbed version, to the radio box version. So it seems to be a bit of a thing. These are the, the wheels. I'm not quite sure if they are the same as any of the other trucks can't, not not from memory, I can't quite think that they are, to be honest. Um, they could be, they could, they might not be, don't know, you might be able to, those people out there that know their cross trucks better than me, might be able to tell. The cab, and this is really one of the reasons why I got this truck, because the cab for me, looking at Steve's HC6, it was nice to see his in the flesh when I went down to Wales. Um, I think this cab looks really mean. It's such a beautiful looking thing. It's, I think it's one of the prettiest cross trucks that they do, um, to be honest. So I was thinking about getting the HC6. And to be fair, money-wise, it's probably better value, I'd say, because it's only an extra £100 over the HC4. But, you know, as I said at the start of the video, I don't didn't really want another big truck. Uh, this is still on a trailer as well and something that's easier to just carry around you know if you should need to carry it just something different so let's lay out size wise let's see if we can get that in shot you can kind of see so I'm going to have to probably move the camera back so I will I'll do a comparison I'll get the MC6 off the shelf she's covered in mud from the weekend and we'll do a bit of a size comparison to see how uh, she stacks up side by. so now I've got the MC6 down off the shelf Let's have a quick look uh, about comparing them to bring it forward slightly so you can see the entire flatbed. The cab is actually pretty much the same size. So if I didn't really put that camera in the best place to be fair. So yeah, they're about they're about the same lengthwise and probably about the same width wise as well. Now that's surprising to me because with the um, MC6 next to the HC6, which I've done with um, next to when I visited Steve, RC Callers Mid Wales, if you haven't seen his channel, go and check it out. He owns a HC6, um, which is the only one I've seen in the flesh, and I thought it looked amazing. The MC6 looks a fair bit bigger uh, next to it. Um, it's mainly the length, because the MC6 actually is quite a long truck. I think the flatbed is 470 or 420, something like that. Um, yeah, so it's it's quite long. It's only um, kind of 10 centimetres shorter than the MC8, so that gives you a bit of an idea. So yeah, the the cab, it just looks wicked. Look at that, it just looks awesome. I'm so excited about this build. So let's have a look at the flatbed. Well, yeah, this is the flatbed. So this is where the wheel arches uh, go in place uh, in those cutouts. And if we compare it to where, for example, the battery lead would come through to sit right behind the cab, I'd say it's maybe not even halfway. So you get a, you get an impression then of the size difference. So if I put the cab on here, you, it's going to end pretty much over where the second axle is, second of the back, behind, just behind the second uh, axle of the MC6. So that's how much shorter it's gonna be. And that suits me absolutely fine. I think it's gonna be a cool looking thing. And I'm really pumped up about doing this. It's gonna be an awesome build project. And I wondered if, looking at the measurements that you get from Cross, whether this might fit on the flatbed of the MC6. I don't think so. When I and it looks at it, it looks like it's going to have a bit of an overhang. But the uh, HG4, the, the bumper on this is quite long, 
So yeah, I don't think it's going to fit, which is probably a good thing, to be fair, because if I put it on the back of this and drive it around, it's going to be a bit of weight and it's going to tip topple it over and scratch it. So yeah, that's probably not the best idea, so I'm better off staying out of that one. So let's reposition the camera and I'm going to talk to you about colours, what my plans are for it, uh, how I am planning for it to look. Colours wise, I have seen a few uh, HC6s and one HC4, I think, painted black and white. There's really, they, they something about the black and white that captures my imagination. My MC6 initially was white, and because it was my first kit and I didn't know what I was doing with painting at all, it came out and it was a bit... It was a bit crap, let's be honest, uh, and I was never really happy with it, hence why Andrew repainted it. So I was a bit disappointed. So this is, now I'm a bit more confident, I'm going to go for the black and white scheme that the MC6 really should have been at the start. I love the red, wouldn't change that, but this is my chance to do the white thing. So the plan is that the cab's going to be all white with some nice black writing on the side. I need to try and get some vinyl stickers. The underside, the wheel arches, is, are going to be black. The underside of the bed is going to be black as well. My bench is filthy. Um, the underside of the cab is going to be black and the underside of the wheel arches are going to be black. So I was going to paint the chassis, well, the, the axles black as well. Not so sure about that because I want to kind of show off the fact that I've actually got one with metal axles. Don't know, so I'm, I may do that, possibly. So it's going to be a fairly simple scheme. Um, the, I want the part that goes in here with the headlights, I want that to be black as well. Again, copying someone else's scheme, which I haven't really done before. But it captured my imagination. It looks so damn cool that it's got to be done. And that's my vision for this. So I will take you through it step by step. Again, I won't show you me building it, but like my other build videos, there'll be bits and pieces and we'll do catch-ups here and there and we can go through it and you know see what you think. But it's another truck for Antarsi for our channel and that's exciting. I'm really like stoked about it. This come for some birthday money. I had a birthday recently and I had some savings which I put towards it. So it's you know, it's a special thing, um, and it's me having a, a second one to truck, and I can also put it on my trailer behind the MC6, which I think will be awesome, and do some nice, you know, driving off, on and off trailer sequences, which should be pretty damn cool. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned and keep up with this project. Uh, it's going to be a good one, and hopefully if she turns out like I want her to, she should look pretty damn epic. Stay safe, everyone. Please like and subscribe. Catch you soon. Bye for now.